I'm uh, Dr. Schmidt, and I've been in practice about 24 years. I specialize in, in shoulder and elbow surgery. Started at University of Wisconsin, and that's where I went to medical school. I went to you know University of Pittsburgh for um, for uh, residency, uh, general surgery and orthopedics, and a surgical internship. And I did a lab year there. Went to uh, University of Indiana for uh, uh, upper extremity fellowship. And I've been in, in Pittsburgh back here about 20 years, and I specialize again in, in, in shoulder and, and, uh, and elbow surgery. I run the uh, Shoulder and Elbow Fellowship Department of Orthopedic Surgery here at Pittsburgh. And I also uh, take part in co-direct uh, laboratory just devoted to shoulder and elbow surgery. So w what a tear of the rotator cuff is, is you have four muscles that control the shoulder, and they control shoulder, shoulder and forward elevation, extra indentation. And what a rotator cuff tear is, is a, is a tear of the tendon away from the bone usually. And it occurs, it can occur idiopathically, that means for no reason, just with aging. And it can occur with a trauma, like falling on ice, or a, a traumatic thing like, like falling after a, a, a ski jump, you know what I mean? Or playing basketball, playing football. And, and it, it just really, really bothers people, but the tendon is, is, is ripped pretty much from the bone. And, and it causes a decline in function and patients have decreased quality of life. And they usually complain of pain, uh, weakness, and, and loss of motion of, of the shoulder that's affected. So it's really a decline in quality of life. I mean, they have difficulty sleeping, they lay on their shoulder that wakes them up, or they can't get to bed, or can't get to sleep because it just hurts. It's like a, a dull ache. They have difficulty like putting milk in the refrigerator, or fastening their bra, or a guy, you know, putting a belt in a belt loop, uh, putting his wallet in his back pocket, it could hurt them, you know, just simple things of life. The first treatment option for a partial or small rotator cuff tear, if it's not traumatic, should be for sure therapy. And it, sometimes physical therapy can help ease the pain and improve the function and you, you don't need surgery. When, when the tear becomes larger or acute, it's, it's, or it's in, a, in a young person, sometimes actually surgery may be the best, the best thing to re repair the tear. The, the downside with rotator cuff disease is that unless it's a small tear, it doesn't heal itself. And it only progresses over time. So if you have medium a large size tear over time, you know, like, like five, six years, it can become unrepairable. And then you're looking at reconstructive options such as muscle transfers or even joint replacements. Early intervention is really important. I mean, uh, you know, if people have pain, that means sometimes it means they're continuing to tear the rotator cuff, and it, and it progresses with time. So if you have a medium tear one year, you know, two years later, you could have a large tear. So, and you should follow these pe these people. And uh, if therapy doesn't do a trick, you know, you may they may need surgery to get it repaired. What happens when the the cuff tears? It's it's two things: the tendon loses quality, so you can't repair it, but also the muscle changes. The muscle uh, gets smaller and gets infiltrated with fat, and then the tendon gets stiff and it be can become non-repairable. If you repair a small tear, the chance of it healing is really great, it's like 90%. If you repair the massive tear, the chance of healing is like 60 to 7%. So as the tear becomes larger, the chance that surgery is successful in healing the cuff declines a little bit. So in most people, um, when you repair the rotator cuff and it and it successfully heals and most of the time it does most people uh, can sleep at night their function comes back to normal their strength is pretty close to where it was pre-injury and, and they're pretty happy like when they fill out the patient reported outcomes it's really high i mean it's one of the things that we can do in orthopedics to really help people so it's, you know and if it if it doesn't heal sometimes people are still pretty happy but if it heals, that's the best chance for them to have regained strength, you know, and increase the function of the shoulder. So the rotator cuff, it's like a living piece of tissue. So it's not like I can just weld it together or bolt it together. What I have to do is, is, is repair the tendon. And what I do is it gives a chance for the tendon to heal. So you have to put the patient in a splint for about four to six weeks to allow the, the tendon to grow in the cuff. And at six weeks, the tendon's only 20% stronger. So I put my patients on a five pound restriction. And from six weeks to 12 weeks, there's no more splint. 
but they go to therapy and they go to therapy to re regain some of the motion and get the shoulder really moving. And then at 12 weeks, the cuff is about 40% strong and they start going to therapy for strengthening. And that strengthening process uh, continues for up to uh, five to six months after surgery. And then about six months after surgery, the cuff is about 80% strong and they're happy and they can play golf and they can do what they want to do. But the shoulder is still a little bit stiff. And, and it takes about a year before that stiffness completely uh, equivalizes or back to normal and, and then and then but they can you know even sleeping takes about you know four you know three to four months so it, basically it's a gradual process but once it heals it's good to go and it's really rare for them to get another tear in their lifetime